guys welcome to our book club today will be the fourth session in our beginners level currently we are reading sideways stories from wayside school a book written by louisa shore and this video will cover from chapter 19 to 24 so let's just start as I told you in the introduction of this video guys, today we will start with chapter number 19 but before let's just uh, remember what happened in chapter 18. So in chapter 18 you will see here that I'm already sharing my screen, we have Leslie's stories and you know like her toes that she didn't you know like um she couldn't find a use for her toes so she wanted to sell them but at the end she said like no way I will keep them. So. In chapter number 19, we have Mrs. Sorbs. That if you don't remember who is Mrs. Sorbs, it is a teacher that is in. Um, let's see, let's see very quickly. Here with Calvin. You know, like he needs to deliver um, a note and he needs to go to the 19th floor, to the 19th story. But there was no 19th story, there was not Miss Sarfs. So that's why here in chapter um, number 19, we have like, there is no story because there is no teacher. So that was very quick. So let's just continue then with, 20, with chapter number 20. And in chapter number 20, we have Katie. Who is Katie? Well, Katie, it's a girl that hates everybody. So, Katie doesn't like you. She doesn't know you, but she still doesn't like you. She thinks you are stupid. In fact, she thinks you are the stupidest person she doesn't know. What do you think of that? So, you know, like, she hates everybody. Uh, even, you know, like, she hates her friends. She hates a lot of people. But she did like one member of the class. She liked Sammy. She thought he was funny. Sammy was a dead rat. Remember the story with the, the coats, the rainy coats and the smell and everything that it was a dead rat, dead, a dead rat? Well, so, you know, like Katie liked Sammy. But that was the only one. Everybody, you know, hates um, Katie and Katie hates everybody. So, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Here, you know, like you have an example why everybody hates her. So let's see. But Katie has good reasons for not liking any of the children she, know she knows. She doesn't like DJ because he smiles too much. And she doesn't like John because he can stand on his head. Katie once had a cat named Skunks. She likes Skunks, but she was afraid that Skunks would run away. You have nothing to worry about, Katie, said Miss Jewel. Skunks won't run away. Just be nice to him and feed him and pet him and won't run away. He may go out and play, but he will always come back. No, you are wrong, Miss Jewel, says. M Miss Jewel, said Katie. What do you know? He will run away. So Katie kept Skunks locked up in her closet at home. She never let him out and sometimes even forgot to feed him. One day, while Katie was looking for her other shoe, Skunk ran out of the closet and never came back. So, you said he would come back, Miss Jewel, said Katie. He never came back. You were wrong. I was right. So, you have, you know, like here an example why she is not like a good girl. And then, you know, like we have another, another example here. Uh, there was a time that Damon tried to teach Katie how to play catch. Damon said, when I throw you the ball, Katie, to try to catch it. I can catch it, say Katie. I will just get hurt. You won't get hurt. Just watch the ball. He tossed it to her, like aventar, toss, aventar. But Katie knew she would get hurt. So she closed her eyes and the ball hit her on the cheek. It hurt. Katie began to cry. You were grown, she sobbed. You know, like, <laughs> that is soft. I was right. That was why Katie didn't like Damon. Then we have Allison. Allison believed that if you are a nice person, they will be nice to you. 
So one day she brought a Katie a cookie. I don't want your ugly cookie, said Katie. It probably tastes terrible. Allison said, no, it's very good. I made it myself. Katie said, if you made it, then it must stink. You can cook, you're stupid. You just put the cookie in her desk along with her pencils, crayons, and books. Three weeks later, Katie was hungry. All right, Allison, she said. I will try your stupid cookie. She took it out of her desk. It was covered with dust. She bought it. It was hard and tasted terrible. See, said Katie, I was right. And that's why Katie didn't like Allison. So just like this, there are some other experiences. So at the end, you know, Katie is not really a good person. So it's very funny how the story ends because it says, but she also has a good reason for not liking you. And she doesn't even know you. Her reason is this. She knows that if you ever met her, you wouldn't like her. You don't like Katie, do you? So she was right. It's funny how a person can be right all the time and still be grunk. So that is the story of Katie. And yes, Katie, I don't like Katie. She seems not to be a good person because, you know, like, She's very stubborn and she wants to do um, whatever she wants when she wants and sometimes it's not possible. So that is the story of Katie and that will be the end of chapter 20. Then in chapter 21 we have Ron's story and well check these guys because they will play a game and it is called a kickball or something so this is it. It's like baseball, but you know, like you are kicking. You are not using your hands, okay? So here we have Ron's story. So, Ron had curly hair and little feet. I want to play kickball, he said. You can play, said Terrence. Get out of here, said Didi. Scram, said Jason. I want to play kickball, said Ron. Well, you are not playing, said Ren Terrence. Beat it. You know, like, aguantate. Ron stomped across the playground to the hopscotch area. Jenny was playing hopscotch with Louis. Remember that Louis is the, uh, the gym teacher, you know? So he told Louis, like, hey, I want to play kickball. And said, so like, okay. So they went, you know, like, with all the group and said, like, hey, you know, like, Ron, he wants to play kickball. I want to play kickball. And everybody says like, oh, yes, you know, like, Louis, welcome. Yeah, you can play. But he cannot play. Why not? Don't be rude. So Louis says like, let's do this. You are a team. And then Ron and I will be another one. So they start playing. And Ron is not very good at playing. He sucks. He doesn't know how to kick. He doesn't know how to, you know, like run. He doesn't like, uh, he doesn't know how to do a lot of stuff. So at the end of the, of the, the game, they lost. And then next day, let's see. Uh, uh, um, well, it says that next day they also play. And again, you know, the score was 21 to nothing. So they, they lost. And then we have, you know, like Louis. It says the next day, Ron said, I want to play kickball. You can play, said Terrence. Get out of here, said Jason. Scram, said Didi. I want to play kickball, Ron told Louis. Louis will be him to the kickball field. Ron and I will stand, all of you. Again, you know, like he will team up playing with the rest, against the rest. Everybody like the teams. Ron, Peach, while Lou play the other eight position. They lost 57 to 2. After the game, Louis took Ron aside. Like, hey, come here, come here. Listen, Ron, he said. Why do you always want to play kickball? You can kick. You can feel. You can even run to first base. You just get smashed every game you know like the ganan the, the, you know and it says hey now wait a second said ron don't go blaming on on don't blame it all on me 
you are half of the team, you know, like, and with that, he punched Louis in the stomach and he punched a heck of a lot harder than he kicked. So, you know, like, remember, Louis is the, uh, the yard teacher and he is during the break playing with the kids. So Ron, all the time, he's like, I want to play kickball. I want to play kickball. Like this game I told you from the beginning, this, okay? And he is with his classmates like, hey, I want to play. Hey, I want to play. But everybody is rejecting him. So he goes with the with the yard teacher, with the with the, um, the yard teacher, and he's like, hey, I want to play kickball. So he goes with the rest of the classmates and like, hey, we want to play. Everybody welcome Louis, but no Ron because he doesn't know how to play. So everybody is rejecting him. And the end of the story is very funny because, you know, like Louis, really he wanted to know like why he is so upset with kickball if he is so bad at it. But then Ron says like, I am not bad. We are a team. Like, come on, you are also playing. And then he punch, you know, like punch in the stomach. And it seems that probably Ron is not so good for kickball but for punching. So maybe he needs to be like a boxer or something. And that is the end of chapter 21. Then we have something very funny. Uh, during other stories, um, we have um, we have been listening to other kind of classmates and they mentioned that there were three Eric's in the class. So this is a time for the three Eric story. So here we have Eric Fry, Eric Bacon, and Eric Oven. You know, there were three children named Eric. And they were known throughout the school for being fat. Eric Fry sat at the end of the room. Eric Bacon sat in the middle of the room. And Eric Oven sat at the end of the room. There was a joke around Wayside School that if all three Erics were ever at the same end of the room at the same time this the whole school will tip over okay because they are fat so it's you know like oh no it's heavy it's heavy it's heavy so that's it so look at them okay and then it says Eddie Bacon hated jokes like that that's not surprising in fact he was the skinniest kid so we have that Aaron Bacon, it's him. He's not fat. He's the thinnest person, you know, the, th the skinniest kid. The two other Eric's were fat. So, you know, like Eric Bacon is like, I am not fat. What's your name? Asked Jason. Eric, said Aiken. Then you are fat because all Eric's were fat. And pretty soon, skinny little Eric Bacon, the skinny kid in Mijua's class, had the nickname Fatso, because fat. Okay? Then we have Eric Fry was really fat. He was also the best athlete in Mijua's class. His body was solid muscle, muscle. However, nobody ever noticed it. So we have that. This is Eric Fry. Eric Bacon, okay? And, well, the two other Eric's weren't good at sports. Eric Ovens was clumsy. Eric, fat so bacon, was a good athlete for his size, but because he was so skinny, he didn't have so much power. So, well, you know, like at the end, the, the Eric who is good at sports, he also has, you know, like... Uh, a nickname so it says so naturally everybody assumed that Eric Fry was also clumsy and weak after all his name was Eric so it says uh, 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 whenever the other kids close up teams Eric Fry was the last one pick they never noticed his home runs or the fabulous catches he made like all great athletes so it says that nobody pay attention to him but it says, we are talking about um, Eric Fry, okay? So it says, Eric Fry was playing one day in the right field. You know, like someone, you know, uh, tossed the, the, the ball 
And it said, he caught it in the mid air on his fingertips, but as he hit the ground, the ball squirted loose. So he grabbed it and then he lost it. So because of that, his nickname was Butterfingers. So we have Fatso, that is not flat. We had Butterfingers, that is not really Butterfingers. And then we have the last Eric, that is Eric Ovens. So we have Eric Fry, Eric Bacon, and Eric Ovens. So we have that is the nicest person. And, you know, like he treated everyone equally and always had a kind word to say. But because his name was Eric, everyone thought he was a mean. Fatso was mean because everybody called him, called him Fatso. Butterfingers was mean because he always had to play right field. So naturally, everyone just assumed that Eric Ovens was also mean. They call him, they call him Crabapple. <laughs> so it's super funny because let's just end the story. So it says, um, all the three Eric's had nicknames. It was better that way. Otherwise, when someone said, hey, Eric, no one to whom, oh, sorry, no one knew to whom he was talking. One time all the Eric's would answer, and the next time none of them would answer. But when someone said, hey, Crabapple, hey, I'm sorry, but when someone said, hey, Crabapple, then Eric Ovens knew they are talking to him. And if someone said, hey, Butterfingers, Eric Fly knew they meant him. And when someone said, hey, Fatso, Eric Bacon knew that he was being called. And that's so sad because it's true sometimes when you when you when when you have some classmates with the same name as you well people start using surnames nicknames so it is what happened with the three edicts but it's so funny because it is always the contrary so they call him fatso but he's not fat they call him butterfingers because they thought it, he was clumsy He's not clumsy. And, well, you know, like Crabapple, because he was always in a bad mood, just like the two Eric's. But he was a nice person. So that is the story of the three Eric's. Tell me which Eric do you like the most. So we finish with chapter number 22. So start with 23. And then we have Allison. So Allison is using a raincoat and the raincoat is the same color of her eyes you will see here a uh, one breaker sorry Alison had pretty blonde hair and always wore a sky blue windbreaker her windbreaker was the same color as her eyes she was best friends with Rondi Rondi had blonde hair too but she was missing her two front teeth Alison had all her teeth Remember that Rondi, Rondi was the girl with the, in the story with the imaginary hat, the imaginary boots, the imaginary teeth. So that's it. And well, um, her story is very, um, I don't know, let's just see. Because, you know, it, it's, you will see, you will see. So it says, Alison wasn't rude, but she always uh, she always said, you know, Alison used to say that she knocked Rondi's teeth out, you know, que ella se lo sacó, le sacó los dientes. Alison was very pretty, so all the boys in Miss Jewel class teased her, especially Jason, la molestaban, teased her. But Alison said, leave me alone or I will knock your teeth out like I did Rondi's. And the boys didn't mess with her anymore. So then we said, one day Alison brought a tangerine, una mandarina, for lunch. She took the peel off in one piece, la peló, peel off. And then, you know, like Miss Mosh, the lunch teacher, said like, oh, Alison, your tangerine, can you give it to me? And Alison was like, Oh, well, Miss Mosh, she always is preparing food for us. Of course I will give my tangerine to her. And then it says that Allison left the lunchroom and walked down to the library. So she went to the library. She had, you know, like her book. 
she was reading it and then it says you know like the librarian woke up to Alison and told her like oh what are you reading and Alison's like oh I'm reading this very interesting book and the librarian says like oh that is awesome may I borrow it and well Alison again says like oh it is the librarian she always helps us she always you know like um is is borrowing books and these like of course you can have it you know and it says the libra the librarian was always lend books to the children so Alison was glad to be able to return the favor she gave the librarian she gave the she gave the librarian the book and then she said that she you know like went outside to the playground she didn't have you know like uh, food she didn't have her book but she had a ball, a tennis ball. So she was playing with it. And then Louis um, got close to her and says like, oh, that is a very, very nice ball. May I play with it? You know? And Alison was like, oh, Louis always uh, lent us um, balls. Of course, I want to return the favor. So here you have my ball. And then, you know, it says that other of his um, classmates, they were playing. They tried to include her in the in the game. But she says like, oh, no, you know, like, don't get close or I will just knock out your teeth. So everybody was like, OK, and let her be. And Alison didn't have lunch, didn't have her book, didn't have her ball. So she just returned to the class. And Miss Jewel says like, hey, Alison. I have some problems with mathematics. Can you help me? And Alison says, like, well, this teacher is always helping us, so of course I will help her. And Miju will ask her, how do you spell chair? So Alison is like, yeah, C-H-A-I-R, but that is not mathematics. And Miju will says, like, oh, I'm so sorry. I confuse them all the time. And well, let's just, you know, like um, read the ending of this story and it says Alison said me you well you learn a very important secret today and I don't want you to tell any of the other children not even Rondi what was that said Alison she didn't even know she had learned a secret she loves secrets you learn that children are really smarter than the, their than their teachers said me you well oh that's not secret said Alison everybody knows that so, well, 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 that is the end. So Alison was a really nice person. She was very kind. She was trying to help everybody. And I guess that at some point, maybe some people, they want to take advantage. You know, like, oh, can you give me this? Oh, can you give me that? But well, that is the ending of the story. So we have the last, um, the last story from this video. We have 24. We have Damien. And remember that Damien, it was this kid that wanted to help, um, you know, like Katie, the, the girl who was very rude. Katie, we have Katie here and we have Dam Damien here. Well, we will just, you know, like read Damien's story. And Damien, it's a guy. It says Damien have hazel eyes, you know, like a like color miel, like a fecito, with a little black dot in the middle of each of them. The dots were called pupils. So was Damon. So was Damon. He was a pupil in Medjugorje's class. So here you have a play on the words. You have pupils because we have pupils, pupilas. But then you have a pupil, un pupilo. Same spelling, same pronunciation, just different meanings. The same thing as you know, like story. And the stories, because the 30 stories, Las 30 Pisos, and the story of your life. So this is exactly the same. And we have that, you know, this is Damon. He has um, hazel eyes. And that day in the class, they were just about to watch a movie. So, you know, like uh, it says here, when it was dark, Damon's pupils got bigger. Se hacían grandes, you know, las pupilas cuando se apagaba la luz. So it says that Miju will ask for a favor to Damon, like, hey, Damon, can't you just go downstairs 
and look for Louis and ask him if he wants to watch a movie with us. And I must say like, yes, of course. So he ran the 30 floors, you know, like he went downstairs to find um to find Louis in the yard. And he asked him like, hey, like Miju will ask me, uh, sorry, Miju will told me to ask you if you want to watch a movie with us. And Luis said, like, oh, that's a nice idea. What is the movie about? And he's like, I don't know, but let me ask. So she, he ran again upstairs. And once he arrived with me, Jewel says, like, oh, me, Jewel, I told him about uh, the movie, but he's asking me the title. And, well, the, 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 the teacher says, like, oh, yeah, the title is Tortles. So he ran downstairs again in order to, to tell uh, Louis, oh, it's about the title of the movie is Turtles. And then Louis asked him, and what is the movie about? And Diamond says, like, I don't know, but let me, let me ask. So he went again upstairs all the way, all the way, and asked uh, Miju, well, like, okay, I told Louis that if he wants to watch a movie, and I told him the title, but now he's asking about the plot. What is the movie about? And the teacher told him, Turtles. So again, he is on his way down and says, you know, like, Turtles. Turtles. You know, like, and what is this about? Damon raced back up the stairs, but first he stopped to, to, to take a drink of water. What is it about, Miss Jewel? Turtles. Damon rushed back down the stairs to tell Louis. Turtles, said Damon. No thanks, said Louis. I don't like turtles. They are too slow. So at the end, Damon, Damon was like, okay. You know, like I was slow and, you know, like all the way up, all the way down. It says his legs were sore, adoloridas. He could hardly breathe, and he said his side ache. His side, you know, like cabeza. His side, he, el, um, well, yeah, you know, like su cuerpo ache, doler. So by the time he got to Miss Jewel's class, the movie was over. No movie. He took a lot of time just going downstairs and upstairs. So when he arrived, the movie was over, and then Miss Jewel says, like, hey. Here you have a piece of paper, like please, you know, like take uh, some notes about the most important things of the movie, what you like, what are you interested in, and moreover. And it says, Damon has missed the movie, but he still could have written something about turtles. Turtles are too slow, but he couldn't find his pencil. It was just, it was sorry it just wasn't his day and then you know like he is about to cry he doesn't know and she's like Mijuel, i cannot find my pencil and Mijuel says like hey kids stop diamond cannot find his uh pencil so let's you know like help him and uh, Mijuel says like okay demon how was your pencil and Damon is just describing a normal pencil. It says, it was long and yellow. Uh, it had a black point at one end and a red eraser at the other. I found it, said Todd, here by the blackboard. Yes, that's it, said Damon. No, there it is. No, there it is, in the corner by the waste basket, said Crabapple. Hmm, maybe that's it, said Damon. Here it is, said John. It's been in my desk the whole time. No, it is in my hand, said Joe. I found it, said Rondi. Here it is. I have it. I found it. So which one is yours, Damon? And it says Damon studied each pencil. They all, they all look like mine. But, you know, like, I don't know. And then it says that in that moment, Louis walked into the classroom. And he says like, hey, Damon. Here is your pencil, you know, like you drop it. Lo dejaste caer. You drop it, you know. So, thanks. And it says that, you know, like, this is super funny. 
because it says, okay, class, let me do well, so that we have no more mixed up, no más confusiones, no más revolturas. I want everybody to write his name on his pencil. And it says, Damon spent the rest of the day trying to write his name on the pencil, on his pencil. Damon's pencil couldn't write on itself. It was just like his beautiful hazel eyes with the black dots in the middle. They could see everything except themselves. And that's so true. But when, imagine, you know, like you have your pencil and the teacher is like, hey, you have to write uh, your name on it. And then, you know, like Damon was trying to write his name here with the same pencil. So that's why at the end it says like, oh, this is just like my eyes. These beautiful eyes, this beautiful color that I cannot see because... Yes, we cannot see our eyes unless it is through a, through a mirror. But well, that is it. That is the end of the story. So, so far, guys, we are just um, one session and then we finish the book. There are other six chapters to read and finish the book. So I am so excited to see how everything goes. Maybe next time we will have some Louis uh, story. And well you have a lot of characters so so far what story has been your favorite and well guys it has been everything for this video i really hope that you enjoyed these very very short stories and you have been increasing your vocabulary little by little and well at the moment that will be it so continue having an excellent time and one more time as i mentioned next time will be the last session so continue having an excellent reading. Bye.